the AH6 a little bit. The engine power isn't the greatest. Currently, what I have equipped is a laser guided rockets, which allows you to use them more or less like AT gems. You do also have access to the Hellfire 2. You can carry up to four of them and a 50 cal gun pot, a Gatling gun. This does have a custom loadout system. F4S Phantom. Currently sitting at battery 11.3. This uh, F4 has the ability of taking up to six AIM 7F Sparrow. You can sadly not bring those six radar missiles together with the AIM-9H. So you have the option of taking either the six radar missiles or your standard four radar missiles and four AIM-9H. And you do not have an integrated gun pod. This is the 222. A couple of things you're probably already familiar with. Armor, basically you've got nothing. Firepower is really nice. Tied with the mobility is actually pretty great. Another one you love to see. The Germans are now getting a MiG-29 as well. Functionally very similar to the okay. Russian version, including the same armament options and access to the HMD. You can also see we have a new effect for the Mac account. And uh, this is an interesting looking map. This is quite a big map. This is the RRB map and it has lots of uh, valleys. We now have animations for ejection seats. The ejection seat does actually work whilst on the ground. The time that it takes to J out has been reduced to more or less mimic the time that it would take the pilot to actually grab the ejection handle. Only one second. And we have a nice animation of the canopy ejecting. This is the T-72 M1. It's the same as the one in the, the Swedish tree. It's the, another M1 version. Nothing really too dissimilar from the other versions that we have, but it's now in the German tree. It's after the KPZ right now. We have the Yak 141. This can bring the R27ER. It can bring a total of four. Unlike any other VTOL we have in the game currently, this is also supersonic. The engine is quite powerful and the plane is deceptively maneuverable. You do have a HMD. Your also have large caliber flares, 60 in total. This is a new anti-air vehicle for Russia. You got two 30s, and with the armor penetration, a 91, that's kind of really good. The Panzer S1 has missiles have an effective range of up to 18 kilometers, and you also have access to thermal vision and a 30 millimeter gun. This vehicle does also have the capability of locking onto and guarding multiple missiles at the same time. Fire at this further one first, then I'm going to switch and fire the second one. The first missile hit the first target and the second missile hit the second target. A new little uh, biplane premium and this is added because the Kosti's Chaika, which was the previous starter vehicle, is now like a little bit too high in battle rating at 2.3. This is the Churchill NA-75. Armor-wise, it's basically the same as the Mark III. This has the uh, short 75 of the Sherman, which is really nice because it means it's a Churchill with APHE. A shame it doesn't have a stabilizer. Really quick reload. Obviously, there's one ace crew. Five seconds. The Challenger 2E. Just after the Challenger 2 Black Knight, it loses the active protection system that the air Black Knight has. But you do gain a more powerful engine and it also gets a 50 caliber machine gun. The bow fighters have got a model update. Uh, these can now take bombs as well. It's a Lancaster. It's a very nice model update. Look at this boy. I believe that is the new biggest bomb in the game. Fighter version of the Tornado. It's not going to turn very well, but it brings a lot of air-to-air -air aircraft ordnance. Or Sky Flash isn't even a new Sky Flash variant. And this one will be slightly better than the Sky Flashes you already are familiar with. This is the Japanese F-16AJ. Yeah, armament is not completely finalized. Right now it's kind of a mix between uh, like the ADF and the uh, standard version. So you do have both options. These may change. The Type 16 FPS. This is a uh, premium version of the uh, Type 16 prototype. Same battle rating, same really everything. Uh, the snow chains. These are purely cosmetical. They do not alter your grip in any way. The ZS-63. Let's be fair, junk. It has two interesting things, which is access to an APFSDS shell and and a laser rangefinder. This is the Chinese version of the 222. The differences mainly are a slightly weaker engine. Earlier version of the gun, it's the 30, which fires slower, but it has a 20 round magazine instead of a 10 round magazine. Also getting a new top tier MBT, the Ariette AMV. It trades off the war kit that the Ariette has. Gun performance is going to be basically the same. You have slightly less protection, but with a, a little bit higher mobility. Another large man's. I mean, protection obviously is the same as the Biz version. Nothing Nothing really impressive. 75 millimeter gun. Reload is pretty okay. ITPS V90. This is basically the same turret and gun system as on the Chieftain Marksman, but on a Leopard 2 chassis. Decent mobility. 30 horsepower per ton, slightly yeah. more than that. There's not a huge amount to say about this one. It's basically just another Macava that you can add to the lineup. Now have a winter version of Saversk 